Hey, hey, hey! Welcome, guys, back to Musings of Maverick. I'm your host, Maverick, and right now we're going to be watching the finale episode of kaguya -sama. So, as some of you guys may have known from my last video, I was on a business trip, and now I'm back. So, unfortunately, I was not able to do this episode on time, but hey, late is better than never, right? So, where do we leave off last episode? Uh, basically, uh, we learned a little bit more about... Kaguya about her family and how she is very looking forward to this fireworks festival or actually this festival with uh, with the press right of course there's also going to be fireworks at the very end of it and part of the reason that she's still looking forward to it is because they haven't met for the entire summer vacation although mostly due to their own fault right um Definitely, I don't feel like this is just going to go smoothly. Like, judging from the episode title and judging from what we learned last episode, uh, I think they're going to have some hurdles to face before they can finally watch the fireworks together in peace. And, well, this is the finale episode, so there has to be some kind of big revelation or big uh, charm point at the very end so that we can feel satisfied with this season in general, right? And unfortunately, uh, the second season has not been announced yet, right? So I was actually expecting it, especially since I'm doing this, this video late, I was actually expecting them to announce something already. Um, lots of other animes within this season have already had their sequels announced, like, uh, like Tensura, like The Promised Neverland, like Bandari. And, you know, Kaguya, as far as I know, it's doing very well in Japan as well. So uh, they should be getting... It should be getting a second season. It's just that maybe they still haven't worked out all the particulars yet, right? And, you know, there's still lots of material to go. I think I read in an interview somewhere that... Um, so right now, the manga of Kaguya-sama is at 14 volumes, right? And I, and I believe I've seen in an interview somewhere that the author said there's the story is only one-third of the way through. Now, take that with a grain of salt, because I definitely don't think that this is a series that's going to have 40 volumes, right? But, at the very least, the author believes that there's still plenty of material to do, so there's plenty of material for the anime to adapt as well. But in any case, let's talk about that a little bit later and just get into the episode first. So I skipped the opening, and let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Can't hear the fireworks part 2. Ah. <laughs> oh, she's coming. Dang. He really wants to go with these guys. Ah. They're wearing a uniform. All right, so where's the twist? Oh, here we go. Unacceptable? What kind of behavior? I can't say I wasn't expecting this. No, it was pretty obvious this is going to happen. So what are they going to do? Oh wait, they actually missed the festival entirely? Okay, I'm calling it right now. Then they're probably gonna make some buy some fireworks, and uh, 
like go to someone's backyard or something. Aww. Wait, what? Two followers or something? Hmm. Now, two tweets. Yeah, she seems to be the kind of girl who would... Oh, she's just depressed. Alright. <laughs> Alright. I was feeling... Alright, never mind. <laughs> You're awfully uh, perceptive, Hayasaka. I think I prepared for her. Yep. Oh, the ramen king. Wait, what? But when they just directly like pass each other. Oh, it's Hayasaka, that's... That's Hayasaka, isn't it? Yep. Bang. Dang, he's smart, but he wasn't able to see through Hayasaka's original. Oh, because he knows Kaguya so well. And so, Shogane. Oh. How are they going to meet each other? Well, at the very least, you got to see the fireworks. Oh, and in those wooden sandals as well. 
Those are really hard to run in. And your first love? Uh Fireworks has concluded. Dang. There is no God. <laughs> Oh, don't say that too soon, young lady. I think I can see where this is going. Any moment now? Any moment now? Ah, This cocker is breaking my heart. <laughs> Bang! Yeah, more importantly, how did you know she was there? Oh, it's the same? Where are they going to... Oh! Shiva? Yeah, that's pretty damn far. <laughs> oh? <laughs> Wait, isn't he a ramen king? So he's also... <laughs> A race driver as well? Alright. Oh? Nice.
that you can't hear the fireworks? There you go. Well, that was a great scene. Wait, 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 wait. All right, I'll look at it later. <laughs> now he's getting embarrassed. <laughs> I, I acted too cool. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Come on, you think too little of yourself. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh. Oh. No, she's just too embarrassed to look at you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. She's just way too embarrassed. Yep. Okay, what are these two gonna say? What are you gonna do, Chica? You're gonna do something, aren't you? Wait, what? These two. Uh. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> oh round three 
Oh my god, that was way, way too funny. <laughs> 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 but, hold on, wait a second. With four people, why would it be a triangle? That doesn't make any sense! <laughs> oh! Hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on already. <laughs> really? Really? That was it? Oh, it's these two. Hello. And Stalker Girl. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Oh. Wait, why are the rest of them coming out? Uh, by the way, I'm gonna mute this uh, music for right now. Because I don't want to get copyright struck. Yeah, this has been very, very enjoyable so far. Although, I wonder if for maximum impact it would have been better. Oh, hold that thought. Oh. What? All right, all right. 
And that was the finale episode of Kaguya Sama. That was a great one. I feel like it definitely did the series justice and let the anime end on a high note, right? So I'm gonna go in and talk about what I liked about or my observations for this episode, and then at the end I'm going to talk about uh, basically my summary of thoughts on the anime as a whole. So uh, in regards to this episode, I think I was already mentioning from last episode that I could see something like this happening um, a mile away, right? Uh, judging from the sentiment of the last episode where it kind of took a more serious tone, a more sentimental tone, a uh, more emotional tone, and then combined with the title uh, of the episode, uh, it was easily predictable that something like this would happen, right? Where something would crop up and Kaguya would not be able to attend the festival as she planned originally, right? So then we get this whole entire scene with her, uh, you know, her breakdown, her emotional breakdown, and suddenly we're going through a roller coaster of emotions, right? We're, go we're getting depressed, and then there's hope again, and then we're getting depressed again, and then hope again, and then finally culminating into the... Uh, the scene where she arrived on the, the pier, the dock, and the fireworks was over, right? Um, I feel like because this is an anime, and especially since I know there's, or we as viewers know that there's still lots of uh, content left uh, within the video, uh, at least for me, the emotional impact wasn't really there, because I know that uh, she's going to be instantly... Uh, gratified by some some other event that's going to happen right but if we're talking about i'm actually wondering like in the original anime wh or not the original anime in the original manga maybe that would have been the ending of one of the chapters right or kaguya uh, got to the got to the dock it was over everybody left and she's like there is no god like i feel like i'm pretty sure that that is probably how the manga went down right and and that moment breaking everybody's hearts, right? So, um, I'll eventually go check out the manga as well, but definitely I feel like that's probably how I would have done it anyways. And um, I'm sure that for those of you who have been following the manga for a long time, probably your hearts would, would have been broken at that scene. Uh, but, you know, as I said, you know, we're instantly rewarded later when uh shogane showed up right and then you know this was mentioned a little bit later with all the with the you know the the sort of like timeline of text going down of how shogane made all the different calculations and preparations to eventually know where shogane was right now i definitely feel like it's still kind of uh incredible that he actually found her when she was hiding in like a dark alleyway but uh it just shows that uh shogani knows her very well right and I, I did especially like the detail where he um he was able to notice that the person um uh, at kaguya's house at that time was hayasaka or Maybe he didn't know it was Hayasaka, but he definitely knew that that was not Kaguya, right? Maybe due to his normal observations of Kaguya. And so he was able to conclude that that was a different person. Um, so I like that part as well. And honestly, I originally was thinking that there, it was going to be more of a, uh, you know, a, a setting where they would buy fireworks themselves and then go off to like a park or something and then you know, just, just play with fireworks amongst them, right? That was what I was thinking would happen. But no, instead, uh, the press decided to take them on this big journey to see the fireworks in an entirely different prefecture, right? So this part I thought was interesting as well. So let me give, let me give a quick, um, you know, a quick explanation of that scene. So actually what Shogani did was he told the driver to go to what is called the Tokyo Bay Aqua Line. So this is a, it's basically a half underwater tunnel, half bridge, that crosses between, not Tokyo actually, but the city of Kawasaki and the Chiba Prefecture. So, uh, let me let me try to explain this for you guys. So, say for instance that this is Tokyo Bay, right? So this is all land, and then this part in the middle is Tokyo Bay, right? 
So Tokyo would be somewhere around here. Down here, nope, down here would be the city of Kawasaki. And then in that place, there is this uh, expressway that, like I said, is half underwater and half bridge that extends all the way to the opposite side of the bay, which is Chiba Prefecture. There's a city there, but uh, I forgot the name of that city. And anyways, it's, it's really cool because, uh, like I said, it's half underwater, right? And it's actually one of the longest underwater tunnels in the world. And uh, so the part that they, they actually did talk about this part, right? Um, how they were underwater and then they were going to surface. Well, they don't actually surface at the uh, Chiba Prefecture, but midway through this expressway, this, this aqua line, there is actually a, um, it's actually a toll booth and also a resting area called Umihotaru. So it's basically a artificial island made there so that you can rest a little bit and also pay the tolls, which by the way are fairly expensive. And so there's this, it's basically at the, at the very middle of the Tokyo Bay and there's this island there and so you can surface and then you can see the night sky. So that was what they were referring to over there by uh, servicing, they passed the underwater tunnel and so they got to the uh, the resting area so that they could see the sky and they were able to see the fireworks, right? Um, so that that was that entire scene. Uh, could they make it in 20 minutes? It's an anime, right? So whatever. But um, I also found something interesting, which is the driver, right? So the driver turn is one of the four kings of ramen. So I'm guessing that this ramen, these ramen episodes are going to be a recurring thing within Kaguya, uh, both the manga and probably eventually the anime as well, once they eventually decide to do a second season. And believe me, I, I'm i fairly confident that they're going to do another season of Kaguya. Um, but anyways, I just thought that was interesting. So uh, I did read up a little bit more about this as well. The author really does like his ramen. So uh, I would not be surprised if there were more stories in regards to this as well. And so then the fireworks, right? And now I'm gonna be honest here. When 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 uh when Kaguya was crying and all that, I I felt kind of bad for her. But like I mentioned before, because I already know that there's going to be something that's going to be made up for her. So I was like, ah, oh, whatever. It's it's just temporary, right? But that fireworks scene, uh, I I really liked how they they did it, right? Sudden silence. Everybody turns their heads and then just one firework up, boom. Like, I legit got a little bit teary-eyed at that part, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it was... it was a great scene. And I especially like how, uh, in the you know, how in the end Kaguya was so fixated on, oh, it's... even though this is what she wanted to see, the fireworks, but then she was fixated on the press, and she couldn't even hear the fireworks because her heart was thumping so fast, right? Like that entire scene was great. In fact, it was so great that I kind of wished that was the ending of the anime, right? So just at the very end, like my heart is beating so fast that I can't even hear the fireworks. Title drop, boom, that is the end of the anime. Ending song, come in, and maybe during the ending song, um, show some in silence uh, while the ending song is playing, show how they eventually, you know, they looked at the fireworks and then they all went back as well. Uh, you know, sort of like the aftermath, right? But don't actually let them have more dialogue or more things to talk about. Maybe at the very end, just uh, maybe one brief mention of uh, either... I don't know, um, looking forward to the next semester or something, right? But uh, that to me would be an ideal ending, right? I feel like that would have a super big emotional impact uh, for, for me and I believe for most viewers as well. Although, even though that was, that was what I was thinking at that time, so I was actually kind of a little bit... Uh, <laughs> Uh, how can I say, disappointed or sad that there was actually still some more because then it kind of brought me out of the moment, if you will. But then again, the last mini episode, right, when they started the next semester, uh, 
I'm not gonna lie, I thought that was hilarious. I don't even know why. So it's basically them just, you know, having this big misunderstanding again, uh, and then, you know, Chika being Chika, and Ishigami being Ishigami, but I don't know, that was hilarious. Oh, by the way, I should probably explain a little bit about uh, what what uh, Shogane was saying during that entire part where he was going crazy. So, Kuro Lekishi. Uh, if you translate it literally, it means black history, right? Black, dark history. And it's basically the, it's talking about, in this context, it's using, it's saying that there's this part of your past that you don't really want to face, right? It's cringeworthy moments of your past. Uh, so we've all been there, we've all done stupid stuff when we were teenagers or whatnot, and it's those, so... This kind of black history is essentially the things that you don't want to think about when you're thinking about your time during um, that youth, right? The things that you're so embarrassed, and so cringy when you think about it. That is Kuro Lekishi. So in Shirogane's mind, the fact that he tried to act all cool and whatnot uh, made that, it felt embarrassing for him. It felt, uh, yeah, it just felt embarrassing for him. So that's why he, he would, there was this entire, I guess, well, that was the premise of the entire ep entire mini episode there, right? So, again, uh, even though I feel like what I what I described a few minutes earlier, that would have the big biggest emotional impact um, and serve as a great ending to to this season of anime. It was funny. It was absolutely funny, and I guess in a sense, uh, they wanted to end this anime back to how it started, right? With this kind, same kind of absurd humor. Uh, and it is a comedy after all, right? So that's probably why they decided to still have that part adapted and end the anime on more on a more lighthearted note. But, I don't know. Um, let me know what you guys think. Like, um, what, I, what the ending that I described, do you feel like that would have been a great ending? Or do you feel like this kind of ending better suits Kaguya more, right? So, anyways, that that was that, and then they had this entire ending where that also didn't make any sense why all the students were running out with them, but whatever. So, there we go. That is the ending of Kaguya-sama. Uh, great final episode, even though I have my own thoughts on it, but, you know, overall... I, I liked it very, very much. Um, this entire series, I loved it, right? From the first episode, from the first three or five minutes of the first episode, I was hooked on this series. And out of all 12 episodes of this season, I think, you know, I gained enjoyment from every single episode of them, right? I, I, I think I, you know, laughed out loud, if we're going to set, use a acronym. Um, every single episode within this season. So it definitely hits the humor marks. Uh, it, like I said at the very beginning, I love absurd humor. Gintama is one of my favorite series, and this is this has a similar vibe to it with the absurdity of the situations. Um, I like that they also try to... Uh, maybe not... It's not really informative, but they do cover in a area of topics where at least for me right i i'm able to pick out things to talk about because actually going to going into this series i was a little bit worried about how i would make my videos because uh, i like to focus my videos a little bit more on the bots and discussion parts instead of just the raw reaction like that's fun and all but i like to have a little bit more substance to my videos as well but throughout these entire throughout these 12 episodes I find that there are parts that I can pick out that I can sort of expand on so you know it was great in this regard for me as well so overall absolutely love it I absolutely love the characters their interactions do I have any complaints about the series hmm you know, honestly speaking I I don't really have much to complain about this series. Uh, it's a comedy, right? Like, what? It's absurd. What? What can you really complain about? Uh, the animation was great. The voice acting was great. Uh, yeah, the music was great. The BGM was great. Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't exactly outstanding, but it did its job. Uh, yeah, so really, just an enjoyable series overall. So. 
Uh, I am definitely looking forward to a next season of this anime. And if there is one, I will absolutely be watching it. In the meantime, I will be going back and looking through the manga because they obviously, they obviously skipped some chapters. Um, probably since they skipped them, they will not be adapting them, so I'm just going to read them as well. I've been dying to read this in manga form since the first episode, and I saw how good of a series it was. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, in all, in all honesty, Kaguya-sama has probably been the biggest series on my channel so far, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are here for, for this series. So, if it, if you like my content, you know, please stay around, stick around, and check out my other content as well. I will be doing my, uh, spring preview, 2019 spring anime season preview, um, in maybe a week or so, and... You know, I definitely will be looking out for more comedies to do as well. So, if you like my videos, stick around and see. If not, well, that's fine, because you can do whatever you please. So, on that note, uh, thank you guys for coming along so far. This has been Mavery from Musings of Mavery, and hopefully I will be able to see you guys again. So, signing off, bye-bye.